Couldn't this freedom based on Roe also continue? Barbara, thank you. I, I represented Madison County in Congress for many years. That's Andrea. It's nice to see you. Theocrat and former Vice President Mike Pence has a new book. And no, I will not tell you the name of his new book, nor will I tell you where you can purchase said book, because if you do purchase his book, I will disown you. Yes, you watching this. So do you hear me, Greg? Don't buy the book, okay? Having said that, though, CNN, because they are bootlickers and they suck up to powerful people, decided to promote Mike Pence in the most shameless way possible by bringing him on for an hour-long town hall where they ask him questions about certain things that he talks about in the book. Now, there was one portion of this town hall, as insufferable as it was, that stood out to me. Not the part that you saw where he kind of malfunctioned for a second, but there's a part where he talks about how he tried to convince Trump to accept the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into his heart. Now, I cut this video like in half. The original clip was like six, six minutes because Jake Tapper asks him about whether or not he can forgive Trump for, uh, I guess, agreeing with the chanters who thought that they should hang Mike Pence. Uh, I I'm paraphrasing, of course. And Mike Pence just, like, talks forever with these long pauses, provides us with superfluous information. It's just, it was insufferable, so I cut it down. And basically, he gets to a point in his whole shtick where he describes how he tried to get Trump to turn to Jesus. And he leads me to believe that he is telling us about how Trump mocked him, but he doesn't realize that Trump was mocking him. Now, it's entirely possible I'm reading too much into this, but I'll give you my argument when we come back. But based on what he says here, it seems like Trump was low-key dunking on him and he was clueless about it. So let's watch. From what I read in your book and other interviews you've done, it doesn't sound like he ever apologized. And we know from testimony that he gave the impression to his top White House aides that were there when the crowd was chanting, hang Mike Pence, he said something along the lines of, according to testimony under oath, maybe they're right about you. So I come from a different faith tradition that also believes in forgiveness, but it also believes in people seeking forgiveness when they have done wrong to someone. Well, Jake, I don't know what was happening at the White House. I sense the president was deeply remorseful in that moment. Now, I know that's at odds with people's public perception about him, but I want to tell you it was true. I could tell he was saddened uh, by what had happened. And uh, we spoke through it that day. And I encouraged him to pray. He told me many times that he was a believer, and I told him, well, turn to Jesus hoping that he would find the comfort there that I was finding in that moment. In the days that followed, I made my way back in that office for another meeting, and the president, days later, was still what I would call downcast. His voice was fainter than I ever remember at any time in our four and a half years together. And uh, um, after we finished talking through some end of the administration business, I... I reminded him that I was praying for him. And he was dismissive about it. But as our meeting came to a close, I stood up. And he was seated at that small table. And I looked at him and, and I said, I guess there's just two things we'll probably never agree on. And he looked up and said, what? And I referred to my role on January 6th. And then I said, I'm never going to stop praying for you. And he smiled faintly and said, that's right. Don't ever change. There were so many parts of that that I found unintentionally hilarious. The first was when Mike Pence, while talking to Trump after knowing that Trump was angry with him, when Trump was talking about how Mike Pence failed us and he was tweeting this to the January 6th insurrectionists during the riot Mike Pence thinks that he can convince Trump by saying, hey, you should turn to Jesus. And then he describes how Trump was dismissive of that. 
did you honestly think that that would work? Did you think that invoking Jesus to somebody who's obviously a non-believer would persuade him? Trump is an unhinged lunatic. So I don't think that anything can persuade him, but I think the least persuadable thing is invoking Jesus. It's really just insufferable. And I want to be like, I wish I was a fly in the room to see Trump's face when Mike Pence told him this. But my favorite part was when um, this was apparently their parting like conversation with each other. Mike Pence said, I'm never going to stop praying for you. And Trump said, that's right. Don't ever change. Trump right there, I swear to God, was mocking Mike Pence. And he doesn't even realize that Mike Pence is too stupid to realize that Trump was mocking him. I can imagine Trump saying that in a very patronizing tone. Like, can you imagine the context of the situation where Trump is irate, fuming at Mike Pence because Mike Pence wouldn't do what Trump wanted and steal the election, which he doesn't have the authority to do. But Trump is angry with Mike Pence, already dismissive of Mike Pence when Mike Pence says that you should turn to Jesus. Do you think that Mike Pence saying that is going to get Trump to say that in a way that's like, Oh, thank you, Mike Pence. Never change. I love you. No, he's saying never change in a very snarky, patronizing way. And Mike Pence thinks that Trump is being genuine. I love this so much. Pence is a huge dummy. And even as Trump was dismissive of his religion to his face, Pence still did not realize that Trump was being patronizing. Former aides have detailed how Trump has mocked Christianity and his Christian supporters. And he even made fun of Mike Pence, talking about how if he asks someone that visited the White House, hey, did you talk to Mike Pence? Did he ask you to pray for him? Like he, he mocks Mike Pence. He doesn't respect Mike Pence. But Mike Pence thought that he said, that's right, don't ever change in a respectful matter. He was, he was saying it to insult you, Mike Pence, but you didn't even realize it. Oh, so good. So good. Now, look, I could be wrong in my interpretation here, but based on what Mike Pence said about the dismissive nature of Trump towards Christianity, how could you not deduce that Trump was being patronizing? Now, in this clip, Jake Tapper is going to ask Mike Pence uh, whether or not he would support Trump because Trump just made the announcement that he's running again. So will you support him? Um, and I'm not going to tell you what he says, but just pay attention to how long it takes Mike Pence to answer this very simple question. Your former boss, Donald Trump, just announced that he's running for president. Will, Heard you, that. will, will, you, will you support him? Well, it's great to be here at CNN, Jake. Thank you. It really is. Thank you for uh, bringing together so many great Americans, including I heard some people from my home state. A of lot Indiana of them. A lot of them. Here Hoosiers today. in the house. And, um, and let me just let me just say that um, you know it was uh, it was a great honor for me to be a part of the Trump Pence administration. I mean, in four short years, we rebuilt our military, we revived our economy, we unleashed American energy, we appointed conservatives to our courts at every level. Uh, but in, in the end, our administration did not end well, and I write about that in my book. But as I've traveled across the country over the last year and a half, one thing I've heard over and over again, whether it's at the grocery store in Indiana or traveling around the country, is people want us to get back to the policies of the Trump-Pence administration. They want to see America strong and prosperous in advancing the policies that we advanced that left America more secure and uh, seven million American jobs created. Um, but the other thing that I've heard consistently is that uh, the American people are looking for new leadership, leadership that will unite our country around our highest ideals. Leadership that will reflect the civility and, uh, and respect that most Americans have for one another. You know, once you get out of politics, um, you learn pretty quickly that while our politics is very divided, uh, the American people actually get along pretty well every day uh, and, and treat each other with kindness and with decency and with respect. And, and so uh, I think in the days ahead, uh, whatever role I and my family play in the Republican Party, whether it's as a candidate or simply a part of the cause, I, I think we'll have better choices, better choices. than so my old running mate. I, I think America longs to go back to the policies that were working for the American people. But I think it's time for new leadership in this country that will bring us together around our highest ideals. Would that be you? I'll keep you posted. You'll keep me posted. <laughs> All right. Just, just to put a button on this, if Donald Trump were to run and win the nomination, would you support him as the nominee? Well, let me say uh, there, 
there may be somebody else in that contest I'd prefer more, Jake. Mm -hmm. Anyone um, in mind? <laughs> I love how Jake Tapper is just chopping it up with Mike Pence as if he isn't some sort of a demon. So after more than two minutes, we finally got to the answer of no. Jesus Christ, this is why I hate politicians, because they can't just answer a question directly. They have to go on some long spiel, and they've got to circle around until they finally get to the answer. It, it's just, it drives me absolutely nuts. And he won't say if he'll support Trump if Trump is the nominee because he says, quote, I think we'll have better choices, alluding to himself. Mike, do you honestly believe that you're going to beat Trump in a GOP primary? Do you honestly believe that? Are you that delusional? I get that you're naive because you didn't realize that Trump was being patronizing to your face. But do you, of all people, believe you're going to beat Donald Trump in 2024? I mean, if anyone beats Trump, it'll probably be DeSantis, but even that is probably not very likely because this is a cult. So usually cults don't just gravitate to a new cult leader willingly. It takes a lot of effort to deprogram them. And you all in your party haven't done that. You've been licking Trump's boots consistently. So they don't really have a reason to migrate to a different leader. And certainly they're not going to migrate to someone like you, Mike Pence. It, it just it, It's delusional to me that he thinks he has a shot. But I mean, ultimately, I don't really want to speak about whether or not he has a shot. I just wanted you to see how long it took him to answer that question, because I kid you not, I think that this speaks to a broader issue with politicians. They're too fake. They're too smarmy. They're too phony. I mean, does anyone listening to Mike Pence see him and think, wow, this man is really genuine with his fake facial expressions and, you know, his forced seriousness that he tries to exude? I mean, he's so fake. He may be as phony as someone like Ted Cruz or Tulsi Gabbard. That's how fake Mike Pence is. And so when I see this, it does remind me why I think Trump had that appeal in the first place. As dumb and imbecilic as Donald Trump is, there is this undeniable authenticity to him that I do believe voters are drawn to. And I don't blame them for that because we've had so much phoniness from Democrats and Republicans that it's almost refreshing to get someone who just doesn't give a shit. Now, unfortunately, it's someone like Donald Trump who's a maniac. But I mean, we need more sincerity and authenticity in politics and not like the fake kind where it's like oh i support the working class that's why i stand against the you know the woke culture warriors or whatever the fuck they say like uh, at this point i'm just rambling but like you get what i'm saying right like we need less fake people less opportunistic careerist politicians but unfortunately that's all that exists in dc and whenever one comes along who's actually serious and is authentic then they usually get rejected by the establishment and the status quo, uh, you know, like Bernie Sanders. But that's like different side of the aisle here. Either way, um, I don't know where I'm going with this. I just really don't like Mike Pence. And I love that he's effectively posting his L's in this town hall where he's describing how Trump is shitting on him. That's beautiful to me. And I want to hear more of that. Like maybe if we can get some excerpts from the book where he talks about Trump shitting on him, I would read that. I wouldn't pay for it, but I would read it just because I like to see Mike Pence eat shit. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.